I saw the letter. I doubted it. I doubted it because my checks from all official handles of the persons involved did not publish this particular letter. And so I was a bit confused as to whether this was somebody sitting in the kitchen with a laptop mm -hmm. and photoshopping whatever letter we had seen. And so I felt that, no, this couldn't have been authentic, especially with the wording of the letter. Then I saw reputable media houses like yourself publishing this and discussing it. Then I saw reputable individuals in this state, like Professor Jampo, discussing it as well and responding to the content of the letter. And so from then, I believed that indeed this letter had some level of authenticity. Mm -hmm. Now, I simply do not understand why a letter was issued on the 27th of May, 29th, I beg mm -hmm. your pardon. Mm -hmm. Two days from today, before today, mm. the president has about five communication specialists. The president has over nine but deputy what? communication specialists. I beg your pardon. Why do you blame the president? I, 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 I'm that explaining that. It's a mistake that I'm the president's name was in a letter. For two good days, none of these specialists has come out mm -hmm. to state that this, there was no letter given to the electoral commission requesting their CVs for two days. It takes a senior officer of the YE to come and tell us that no letter was directed to the Electoral Commission and that it was from the Public Services Commission. Why do you doubt him? Because it, uh... I, I'm explaining to you the procedure to which presidential information must be put out there. And so if there needed to be any correction, it should have come from this quotas. And that is why I want us to doubt what my brother Awal is saying on this platform. Because indeed, if it wasn't right, the presidency would have stated that categorically clear. That's one. Two, why are we running away from the content of the letter? Because Who the is content, running away I mean, Awal is running away from what the content. What do you content. mean by that? He's stating, he's telling us that the head of corporate affairs, Ed. Human resource. Human resource, Ed in the content of the letter. Which tells you and I that there's everything wrong with this particular letter. Indeed, if it was right, I believe strongly that he would have been defending, he would have been protecting it here. Because he finds the content of the letter wrong, he is correcting the content of the letter. He finds, the, he he finds the content of the letter <laughs> not truthful. Roland, he finds it wrong. <laughs> oh, no, so. He finds it wrong. wrong. Not true, wrong. wrong. He, no, says it. Say he it. said he finds it wrong. I said it's not wrong. It's wrong. I, told you, <laughs> I, I don't know why you, you want to defend that. So let me make my point. I'm not defending. I'm no, no, no. <laughs> we, we, we mustn't be mischievous with a discussion like this. He finds the content of the letter the wrong. And what it tells you and I is that everything about this letter is wrong. Now, let me explain something for free to my brother Awal. The difference between serving a letter to YA from the presidency and serving a letter to the Electoral Commission is enshrined in Article 46. And I can give you the Constitution of the Republic of Ghana. Tell me where in the Constitution that it states that YA is an independent authority and should not be directed mm. by any other authority. Tell me where. Two, the Electoral Commission, the difference between the Electoral Commission and YA, where you have been served a letter, is that one is a constitutional body and the other is a statutory body. Which means that what we find in the Constitution mm -hmm. must be complied with and any other directive or direction that is inconsistent with what is enshrined in the Constitution will be declared null and void. And so, the fact that the President serves YA a letter requesting for your CVs does not necessarily mean that he has equal power to serve the Electoral Commission a letter requesting their CVs. In, in other words, one who asks, what at all does President Kufadu want with the Electoral Commission since his inception of office he says as it's president? Not the president? From 2017, Roland, President Kufadu was the first president of the Republic to superintend over the dismissal of an Electoral Commissioner and her two deputies. In fact, what do you mean whilst, he, whilst his predecessor Mm. goes down in history as the first president to appoint the first female to the Electoral Commission. President Akufo becomes the first president 
to sack the first female. But he's also the, the first president to appoint Number two, a he, second female. He is, the, no, the, he is the first president to sack the first female. I'll tell you what he's the first president to do again. President Akufuado became the first, the first president, president to appoint a second female. To, no, he rather became the first president to superintend over an electoral commission that declared over 13 results in an election. And by his doing of appointing his own electoral commissioner, they reported and released over 13 What do you mean by he appointed results. his own electoral commissioner? They I mean, he came into office, he decided to use some dubious, mischievous processes in sacking an electoral commissioner and two deputies, appointed his own electoral commission, commissioner and became the first president to superintend over his own electoral commissioner that released over 13 results in one particular election. President Kufuado again became the first electoral commission, uh, became the first president to appoint a known MPP apparatchik, appoint a known MPP communicator, appoint a known MPP head of research for MPP in the Bono region as a commissioner at the electoral commission. And the fourth one to break our backs is that President Akufuado has demanded that people in the electoral commission supply their CVs. I will sat here and rightly said that the head of HR who signed this letter, okay, Mr. Samuel Bodu, went through an interview where he submitted his, 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 his curriculum vitae mm. before his appointment. If indeed he went through an interview and submitted this report and has been working at the Electoral Commission for all these years, why now is it that President Akufuado wants them to submit their CVs for him to do what? That is the question the Ghanaian people want to know. But I have done further checks and probably it will be breaking news on your platform. There are four people President Akufuado has targeted at the Electoral Commission. That's an allegation. Four people. I'm stating it. My name is Malik Basentani. I'm Deputy National Communications Officer. I'm stating this here that there are four people that President Akufuado is targeting at the Electoral Commission. Yesterday, we had documents to that. I may decide to reserve their names. Four people. And all details we have here indicates that the President has realized that I'll, he you has know I'll ask you to show me the document. I, 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 I withhold their names. In fact, when you then call, you can't mention them. I, I'll mention their names. That, okay. I'm thinking that I'll mention their names. <laughs> when 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 you made a call to somebody asking whether he had received the letter and submitted his details, you sat here and said you will not release his name to protect his identity, right? Yes. I won't release the names of these persons. But I'm stating here that President Kufuado has realized that there are some four persons at the EC's jurisdiction, within the EC's jurisdiction, that have been fighting for credibility at the Electoral Commission. Four people. And they have queried them. They have gone through different procedures of sacking them. But all attempts to get these people out so they can continue in their rigging sphere have proven futile. And so the last step is to request that they provide their CVs. So he goes through and they will definitely find one or that's two a, that's a That's a wild allegation. I am stating it. <laughs> and I have done my checks and balances. I have documents here. To prove that, and in the coming days, what, what do your the NDC say? will address this particular matter as a whole. We will not allow President Akufuado, mm. as a result of his witch hunting at the Electoral Commission's doorstep, as a result of his zeal to ensure that we have a discredible, to have an incredible, to have a reckless, to have a, a, an impure and an, in, an independent body in this country to materialize in this country, would ensure that. He being the first president to sack the first female electoral commissioner in this country. He being the first president to superintend over an election where an EC declared over 13 different results. Now you in know the reasons election. why he Madame being the president was, to appoint an MPP was, communicator as was a commissioner from office for procurement reasons. And he and, and there are a number of uh, processes that have been stipulated in the constitution. If you have to remove an EC chair, a health minister under President Akufuado, sat in parliament and said that he used a whooping $84. In fact, $120 million. That was supposed to be used in procuring drugs into this country. He flouted all procurement laws, all legal procurement laws in this country. He sat in parliament and admitted guilt. And he further stated that at that particular point, where he had in hand 120 million of the taxpayers sweated, hard-earned money, he wasn't thinking right. 
And that was why he engaged in that misconduct. The president went to his hometown and said that particular appointee who had breached procurement laws in this country mm. was bread. The health minister, Abre, he's tired. Ghanaians worry him a lot. The president's nephew, Mr. Kenufurata, in an issuance of a bond of 2.25 billion, okay, when Mr. Broja Jenfi filed that particular matter at Shrach, in the ruling of Shrach, just like a commission was set up to investigate Madam Charlotte say, the commission indicated that indeed Mr. Kenufurata had breached the procurement laws in the issuance of that particular bond. The president was supposed to act with immediate effect. And of course, the in point? the dismissal the of? of Mr. Kenufurata, what? the president reluctantly sat What's your point? and ignored it. The point I'm driving at is that the same laws that were used in taking Madam Charlotte Osei out of office with speed were overlooked when it had to do with the president's nephew, when it had to do with the president's best friend, and when it had to do with other appointees, the president sought to protect in office. And so the dismissal of Madame Charlotte Osei can be concluded at a very intentional one. Mm. The president deliberately mm. came into office to do that. Mm. And before office, they had indicated that, Roland, all I'm saying in this particular matter is that before we have a press conference indicating the real reasons behind the president demanding the CVs at the Electoral Commission, I plead on him that level 100 law will tell you that Article 46 reminds us that the Electoral Commission is an independent body. Yeah. And just so Awal does not go out misinforming everybody, there's a difference between a constitutional body and a statutory body. That is why the president cannot request for CVs of military officers. In fact, in the recent interview of Mr. Brian Achampo, he refused to disclose that he was a chef at the U.S. Army. When he was questioned why he refused to disclose that he was a chef at the U.S. Army, he said there were security implications to that. And for security reasons, he didn't want to. So there are certain bodies that are protected by law. There is certain information that is protected by law. And I believe that level 100 law should tell President Kufadu that his regard or his disregard for Article 46 can plunge this country into chaos. And don't worry, I, I sit want. here so as a you, young guy you just being afraid okay. of the independence, being afraid of the sanctity, being afraid of future elections in this Malik, country, because I still have many elections to partake in in this country.